Andreas, Christian, Ziggy, and Freddy, fans of the German national squad in Qatar, a nation that's faced unprecedented scrutiny in its role as World Cup host. But then, there it is, that unique atmosphere when the countries of the world come together as one. They weren't paid fans. That was just great fun. I've got goosebumps. And in the end, cold sweat, shock, and a disaster for the Germans. At least Qatar's stunning nature lives up to its promise. These guys arrived from Munich overnight. They haven't slept much, but there's no way they're going to be hanging around in their apartment. They're heading for the sea and some of that thrilling World Cup flavor. We can plan that in, Fredel. Well, we saw how successful that was yesterday. We got out at the wrong hotel. Until yesterday, the guys were feeling a bit uneasy. As we set off, I said to my wife, for the first time I wasn't feeling that good. I'm actually a bit agitated and can't really gauge my mood. But after the flight, the World Cup feeling came back. It was crazy, amazing. I'm here to watch football. I watched 10 qualifiers and that's cool. Football every day, that's like Christmas and Easter together. 300,000 people live in Qatar which has one of the world's highest GDP per capita thanks to its oil and gas reserves. The Emirate has spent more than 200 billion euros on this World Cup, making it by far the most expensive in history. Everything has to look perfect, at least. Every street, every park, and every building. Achieving that shimmer and shine, that's the job of these men from India and Nepal. They've been deluged with contracts in the run-up to the start of the tournament. We meet them on the roof of a pretty tall hotel in the city center. There's no two ways about it. The cleaner's job is extremely dangerous. Just watching the crews go about their work takes your breath away. Forman Gangadar is the most experienced. He's been doing this for seven years. Too much uh, feeling, sir. Not good. No, go, no going, not working, me going home. After two months back, uh, after little, little, small building, after working. In spite of the gleaming facades, Qatar's track record is tarnished construction worker deaths on the stadium sites, and the usual suspected vote buying in the process to win hosting rights. The 2.7 million migrant workers here just want to send money home every month to their families. In Kenya, Bangladesh, India, or Nepal. The Soccer World Cup, an extravagance that has little to do with their lives. It's starting to feel a bit cooler, and the four German fans have arrived at the Corniche, Doha's famous beach promenade. Are you going to give me a smile or what? They don't go anywhere without their trophy and mascot, which refuses to stand up. And then the trophy begins to work its magic. Everyone wants a selfie. Coming home to Germany! Here we go. Where are you from? Guys. That's not good anymore. Give it here. It's simple. It's awesome. You saw the beaming faces. That wasn't fake. They weren't paid fans. That was pure emotion and really good fun. I've got goosebumps. 
The four guys are looking for a bar to watch the opening match, with a good beer in hand. And that beer costs 15 euros, but who cares? Andreas, Christian, Ziggy, and Freddy, perfect ambassadors for Germany. United in song, even with English fans. A discreet protest against the mullahs in Iran, isolated reminders of a world beyond sport. The next morning at Souk Wakif Market, one of the oldest in Qatar. Downtown Doha has rarely seen crowds like this. The cafes and restaurants are already filling up. The Doha Souk is typical of the wealthy oil and gas nations on the Persian Gulf. So clean you could almost eat off the floor. Workers are barely in evidence. It's a shimmering world buffed to perfection, not just for the World Cup. What the four Bavarians like most of all, the sense of camaraderie between people from all over the world, in spite of on-pitch rivalries. But the drink selection leaves them wanting. Fresh juice, Fresh juice. milkshake, hmm. not really what we're looking for. Andreas' cell phone vibrates. His daughter is sending him details of a World Cup boycott appeal. <laughs> As we've all realized, there have been some issues over the past 12 years. So there's no way she was going to come here. But also tolerates her dad, who's daft enough to make the trip anyway. I'm nearly 60, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to get another two or three World Cups. So my decision was, I want to watch football. <laughs> <laughs> so together or by yourself? OK, he wants to be on his own. There aren't enough hotel rooms in Qatar, so fans have to be flown in from neighboring nations. This was supposed to be the first ever carbon neutral World Cup. But with seven newly built stadiums, the sustainability credentials are disastrous. For Qataris, this is the reality. Taxes, zero. Gas, cheap. Water and power, for free. The result, an excessive lifestyle. We're heading to the north of the peninsula, out of the crowds past the Albait Stadium where the German team plays twice. Quite a few fans here have traveled to every World Cup for decades. This one is different. The atmosphere in the stadiums lacks something, they say. Well, when the president says this will be the best World Cup of all time, then I'm left wondering, the best for whom? After all, it's about football. And if it's about football, then it's about the football fans, and that's us. The massive difference between what I'm experiencing with the fans and what I've felt in the stadium, it's difficult, it's difficult. The four have arrived at their destination 70 kilometers away a leisure camp where they can book kayak trips. Life jackets are a must, even though the waters off the coast are flat. Qatari laws are strict. The paddle excursion will last one and a half hours. Before they set off, they are given instructions from tour guide Martin from Kenya. Left, right, left, right. This is to move forward. The group plans to head for the mangroves, a stringently protected nature reserve. Lastly, we are eco-friendly. So, in case you spot any trash or any garbage, uh, please pick it and put it inside your kayak. Ahead of the tournament kickoff, volunteers cleared the mangroves of all plastic and cans. The trash has been dumped by campers. Sustainability isn't a priority in Qatar. So as well as making the place look a whole lot better, 
The regular cleanups organized by Jose are helping to promote the message. So to date, we've removed over 170 tons of trash from the environment, from the sand dunes, from the desert, from the beach, from the mangrove, from the heritage sites of Qatar. And that's where environmental awareness begins. Today's haul, 100 kilos. A drop in the ocean when you consider that Qatar is one of the world's biggest polluters. And now, the mangroves of Al Taqera, a rare profusion of natural life in the desert nation. It's really surprising to find something like this in Qatar, in the middle of the desert. I'd say this is unspoiled nature right here. Now and again you register the force of nature in this world, and I'm lost for words. This nature excursion will be one of the most pleasant memories from their trip to Qatar. because everything that they experienced with the German team in the World Cup stadiums ended with bitter disappointment. Japan is the rising star, and Germany crashes out once again. <laughs>